Let us look at a few examples of JavaScript. So first thing I want to show you is constants. Right, so constants are literals. You have numbers like 100 or minus 100. You have strings where you can use double quotes, few, foo, or single quotes. You can write either of either or. You have booleans such as true. You have false. You also have undefined. Undefined is a special constant, kind of like void. You also have null, but for the sake of our class, we're not going to cover null. Um, so in this formalism, what we're saying is that a constant could be either a number, a string, a boolean, or undefined. That's Those are the ones we care about, undefined. But in the, in the slides, I'm going to write undef because I'm lazy. Okay. Next, let's see a few expressions in JavaScript. One thing that we'll learn is that in JavaScript, everything is an object, including functions. So functions are objects, and they're actually the only way to create ob They are the only way to create objects? We'll see. They have a very weird intersection between what are functions and what are objects. They're both basically the same thing. Um, so, first let's look at objects in JavaScript. So, in JavaScript you can write an object w between braces. So if you write it like this, this is an empty object. If I write an object, I can also define a field. So you put in quotations the field name, and you can write anything in a string, and then you can write a what you want to assign, kind of like a structure in, in C, right? But there are no structs in JavaScript, they're all objects. So actually this creates an object. So I can write obga1, and I say obga1 equals asd bar, and I can say that this has true, you can write any type. So now I've defined an object, and uh, JavaScript actually, or the browser that I'm using, actually allows you to uh, look in a very nice way at the fields and their values. Um, you can click it. Okay. And I can't, then I can look up a uh, field. So I can use exactly like a dictionary. I can write the name and that will return the field. Or I can write bar um, and it will return true because I assigned it to true. If I write a thing that is undefined, like foo, I get that special constant called undefined. I can also um, delete things, so objects are mutable, right? So if I delete foo, foo is undefined, so it does nothing, it says true. And I look at object one, it's the same, right? But I can delete um, from obj1 asd. Oh, sorry, delete. And now if I print out obj1, now it doesn't have that. It doesn't have asd. And I can add a new thing just by assigning it. So I can assign to my name 99. Okay, so now I print out what is in obj1. I see that uh, ASD is no longer there because I deleted it and I queried uh, and Tiago is assigned after the object was created. Objects are mutable. You can change them at any time. Uh, you can also do obj1 bar and that will also work. So you can use the dot notation uh, or obj1 Tiago would also work. And if it's undefined, uh, like car, it will return undefined, which is the same. It's just syntactic sugar for writing uh, this. Oops, this. Right, so it's exactly the same thing. So we looked at uh, object declaration, we looked at field lookup, we looked at the two notations of field lookup, we talked a bit about uh, field update. I didn't show you that you can do 
um, car equals uh, a thousand. And now obj1 car. obj1 is defined with car assigned to a thousand. So you can use the dot notation as well to assign numbers to fields. You can use delete to delete a field. And you can both do delete um, with the bracket notation or with the dot field notation. So they all work. Now if you do obj1, we have that. Okay, everything works as expected. Um, we talked about the denotation, so that all works. You can use console.assert to, to write tests. So you get an assertion, and you can pass it, you can fail it. Okay. So actually JavaScript supports that. Um, what else? You can assign numbers as keys. You can assign null to keys and you can assign uh, true and false. You shouldn't, but you can. So you can do true equals uh, 99. So now obj1 has true there. Uh, but then if you do true, it kind of gets converted into a string, which is very confusing. But it that's how it works. So if you do uh, you, one one one, sorry, if you do one 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 equals ninety nine. Uh, obj one now has a string one 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 defined. So this is not actually a number. What what JavaScript does behind the, the scenes is basically whatever you assign here gets converted to a string, and that becomes the field name. Okay, so in our implementation, we'll, we'll just assume all the keys are, or support keys that have strings. So we'll not support like numbers being converted to strings because that doesn't make any sense. Um, so similarly, you could do undefined, a beautiful thing. Now obg1 has a string. Undefined, which gives me shivers, but that's how it works. Um, so then let's look a bit at functions. So, so far we've, we've looked at objects. We've seen that we can treat them as basically hash tables. Uh, hash tables that convert whatever key you gave it to a string uh, will, for the sake of, of this module, we'll always assume the keys are strings and we'll only use uh, keys as strings, um, we will now learn how to write a, a function declaration. And in, in JavaScript, it's very simple. You just write lambda x, you say var f, you say that a function takes a parameter x and returns x plus 1. Now I define the function f, which I can pass 10, and I get 11. Right? So I added 1. So the way you write a lambda is parentheses and then an arrow, you can add multiple parameters. So I can write um, x, y, and that works. So now I've defined a function with two arguments, and I can call it with, I can call it with, what? call it with two parameters. Um, and of course, I can create JavaScript supports nested functions. So I can create a function f. Um, I can create a, a func, let's say. So I could create here inside something that takes an x and returns uh, an x. So that is supported. What I did was it created a function, and you can actually look at the function, how it's implemented internally. Um, so for now, we don't know what that means, but we will learn what this means. Okay. So as you can see, there's like a field called name. So you can always check if a function has a name. Um, there's another way to define functions. Uh, these are just lambda declarations, but you can actually create a function and give it a name like we do with define, right? We have that um, function definition. So in, in, record, you, in, record, in JavaScript, you do 
f and you say x y and then you can you can just write return then you need to write return and with the lambda the lambda expression you just return the expression whereas if you write function you have to return something so then i can do x plus y um, and if i call this and i do 10 and 20 i get 30 right because i'm returning 10 plus 20. Um, right, so this code is equivalent to this racket code, right? So things are pretty self-explanatory at this point. Of course, uh, in JavaScript, operators are infix, not a prefix like in racket. So that is probably a welcome change for you. Um, so, what else? Racket JavaScript supports some um, syntactic sugar. So you can write this. The same program can be written in three forms. Um, this is one form, which is what we're actually going to support in our homework um, in the last assignment. Um, so this is a syntactic sugar for this. You can think of you know, the easiest way, if you're lazy in terms of writing an interpreter, is just have support for the empty object and then add a way to add a field to an object. You don't need that, right? You can always create the same object by using the more verbose process. Actually, when you're implementing an interpreter, it might be useful to just support this and then have a, have a way to just through syntactic manipulation allow uh, more simpler forms that's actually what you're learning in homework seven uh, when you you are all the the interpreter is written with functions that only expect one single argument but then we support a variable numbers of them just by transforming the source code that's what we learn in homework seven um, and here is something similar that actually is good in the in the point of view of the designer because it means that the pro programming language can be implemented very simply and analyzed and, and understood very simply and that is a good thing try to maintain the core very small very uh, so that you have you can maintain your code very easily another way to represent the same code is by writing new object which is equivalent to writing this and then you can assign it with the dot notation. So all these three versions are all the same, all equivalent. Okay, um, what else? Now let's look at some expressions in JavaScript. Uh, sorry, in Lambda.js. So now let's recap. We want to formalize Lambda.js, which is just the Lambda version of JavaScript. We as we've seen, we only need the object, the empty object, right? The object without any fields. And then we have to have a way to look up a field of an object, which is highlighted in blue here. So it assumes that E is an expression, so it has to be an object, and E has to be a string. So you evaluate those two, and you're going to look up whatever string you got here and look up that field in this object. And then you're going to have this notation. It represents assigning assigning a value to an object. But actually in Lambda.js, this is going to be a, an immutable assignment. So what you're going to do is like we've learned in, in Racket with hash set, uh, where it creates a new hash table. It's going to be the same here, the same semantics. And then you're going to have this notation, which represents calling a function. So you see E is supposed to be a function, and you're calling it with a single argument. And this lambda is going to be a, a function declaration as, as before. And as we'll see, this is almost all you need to be able to implement JavaScript. So at runtime, we're going to need two things. So we're going to need a closure again. So this should not be new to you and an object. And what is an object? It's basically just a hash table. Okay. Um, so this is the semantics of homework four. Right? 
it should be very familiar to you, lambda calculus with environments, so lambda e, the language lambda e that you've learned. So all of these rules are the same as what you've learned. We now have three new rules that operate on objects, right? So if you if you have an empty object, what that means is that you know the hash table all keys are assigned to undefined, right? Because that's the behavior we've seen. So it's not an error to look up a field that is not in the hash table O. So we just return an hash table O such that all fields are undefined. That's one way to represent an empty, uh, one way to represent mathematically uh, an hash table whose all values are pointing to undefined. So the next operation is get. So you, this is the syntax for get, right? What, how do we evaluate that? Well, we have to evaluate the EO as an object and then the EF as a string, right? And then what do we do? We look up the string on the object, okay? So actually you will not need to implement this. Lambda.js, which you will use, will implement this. So you just need to understand what you, what this is doing. And I hope you can write this point. So finally, the object set, what it is doing is an immutable setting, set of a field. So you need to evaluate the object, right, which is what's happening here. O is the object that you got by evaluating. And then what do you do? You evaluate the field in green, and that returns a string. And then what do you do? You evaluate the expression you're assigning, and that returns V. What do you do with that? Well, now you call hash set, right? So you're going to return a new, so this represents hash set. You're returning as you remember from the environment set, right? So this represents adding a pair in the object O, and that is being returned as a new object, with it, which is just a hash table. Okay, so how can we implement this? The, the final slide that I want to show you. Constants, we can create, I'm just going to call it with K for constant, just so we have a way to represent constants. Um, so this is the AST. We have one for numbers, one for strings, one for booleans, and one for undefined. Undefined is nothing, so no fields. So what about values? Values, very trivial. I'm going to use J for JavaScript objects. Okay, so what do I have? I have a closure, which is this and an object, which is this, right? So what do we keep in data? Just a hash table. What do we keep in a closure? It's going to be an environment, which is a hash table, and the declaration, which is a lambda, lambda expression, right? So a lambda is an expression, therefore it's here. And then you have a, a variable, also an expression. You have function application, which is standard, what you've learned before. The two new things are set and get, right? Where get is just looking up a field in an object, and set is setting this value to this field, and this is the object. That's how you represent the ST. And with this, you basically are learning the foundation. The interesting part will come in our next lesson. I hope you had fun today.